This podcast contains some magical adult language. Listener discretion is advised. And sorry, Mom. Welcome to Rat Castle, a progressive chat about theme park magic without the pixie dust. I'm Nathan Hartman, and I don't know why I've Gregorian chanted this intro. <laughs> With me tonight are three of my rats. Victoria, hi, Victoria. How are you, Victoria? I'm well. I'm well. Can't complain. Good, good. Uh, and Janine. Hello, Janine. Hi, Nathan. You are so lucky that you moved away because the play that I'm in is desperately trying to cast some some monks. <laughs> oh, I would be a good mom. <laughs> what you play are you in? Right, what play is this? Uh, Sherwood, The Tale of Robin Hood. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. Are you made Marion? No. Oh, no. I just, you know, you got the vibes. You could you could be a good movie, Mary. That, no, no it, the cast is very young. <laughs> so you're like the old Marion. You're like you're I'm like... the midwife. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it, okay. Is it like the, call her? Okay. Is it like the Disney version? Is everybody I, 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 in like, like furry suits? No, it's it's Ken. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Ken Lug- Ludwig's version. Um, I have like okay. three or four roles. Very wow. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And and I assume your son is Robin Hood? No. No. Is he no, an arrow? He's got a... <laughs> He'd be okay with well, that. I could be I could be uh, little John. But yeah. I I have to be but I'd have to be the, the Disney little John, the bear little John. Because by the way, you, that movie, you know it's spawned, you know, a, a generation of furries, right? The whole film. Yeah. Yes. Like yes. Yeah. That's because uh like a lot of people in that movie are fuckable. Le- like, they just are. Little I don't Little know. John and Baloo were sexual awakenings for me. There is no doubt about yeah. that. So You might Sorry. have a run on Friar Smooth. Tuck too, Dave. I don't know. <laughs> you could you could pull a Friar Tuck. I could. I could see a Friar I could. Tuck. Oh, I could. Yeah. 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 Shave on the top. He does do that little that little belly bump that <laughs> could be yes. fun. Uh so that's an option. <laughs> Um, Dave was kind Wait, enough recently. I should say Dave, Dave was kind is here to... too, by the way. He didn't. Yeah. Hi, him. Dave. Hello, Dave. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Friar, Friar Dave is with us, of course. Um, and, uh, let's see here. Dave sent us, uh, as I was speaking his name without introducing him, uh, a, I guess I should probably just, I'll add this picture, I suppose. Uh, he, he, uh, we had questions last episode about the gay body types and he sent us a chart. Of Jake the dog in all gay body types. So somebody sent me uh, that today, well, and it yeah, is no. Accurate. I certainly have no no questions. I have no questions anymore. It's all it's all laid out. Um, yep. Though I am curious, c- cubs and and pups are younger variations, right? They're like, or are they specific Correct. types inside of? Okay. In somewhat similar, uh, in somewhat similar, like different body types, similar ages. But you're right; it's yeah, usually an age thing. But I know, yeah. you know, guys in their 40s who still call themselves pups. So you never know. So it's like a mentality. My favorite is Twunk. Is my favorite. Twunk one. is. Twunk is. Twunk right. is halfway between a twink and a hu- and a hunk and, and or a, a jock. Hunks are hunks. According to this graphic, are very hunky. Yeah, they're, they're like <laughs> not even jocks. They're hunky hunks. They're big. They're so, muscle muscle dudes. Yeah. Standard. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then so. there's in the middle. There's just average, which I don't know. Is that straight <laughs> or is that is that just? A, a, it's in the gray no, box. Just... I assumed it was straight because it was like in a gray box and was like you know this thing, whatever it is. No, it's just body types. You know, just oh, cool. your average your average Joe gay. Well, well, God, God bless him. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't, that's, I have no good transition out of that. Um, <laughs> we should all try to Y'all want to talk about Disney? Yeah, y'all, y'all want to talk about y'all. Disney? Uh, so yeah, uh, the news! Okay, let's talk about the news. We'll start at Walt Disney World with the Magic Kingdom with some big old 
like news when it comes to Tiana's uh, yeah. very exciting stuff. Uh, Janine, what did we get to see recently? We got to see the Tiana Matronic. <laughs> Tiana Matronic. Tiana, Tiana. Tiana. Matronic. Tiana. We got to see the Tiana Matronic. That, that's very it good. On. That's a very drag name, by the way. I, I stole Tiana. it. Yeah, it's good um, though. It's good. Yeah, can't can't give credit for that. But um yeah, so we uh they gave us a pretty pretty solid sneak peek at the Tiana animatronic. She's super cute, it's really fluid, really beautiful. Cannot wait to see. And my understanding is this is not the only Tiana animatronic. No, um, I think there's several in different outfits. I think her hair looks amazing. It, yeah. It's really cool. I, there I've was seen some, some people complain yeah. that she doesn't really look like her. Um, Lord have mercy. That was it, the, that drained me. <laughs> I, yeah, I saw that whole chat. And not to yeah. drag anybody through the mud, but come on. Like, first of all, we know this ride takes place l- pretty f- long after the film, right? It's, I, I don't know if it's long. Because her, bus- no. well, her business. Yeah, long is, enough. Her, that's true. Long enough to establish a, a business. Years. Yeah. yeah it's a few years. Okay, and if that's true, as she gets older, she would look more like her mom. And that's, mm-hmm. to me, what that animatronic looks like. It looks like an evolution mm-hmm. of her that's all that's a closer Dave, to her mother. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Right? I and, literally said this to yeah. someone. I was like, I look more like my mother now that I'm closer to her age. But I'm like, this is how black people age. They just age <laughs> gracefully. I'm sorry if that confuses you. Like... Well, and then also it's like, look at every other human animatronic, especially with a stylized animation. Mm-hmm. Like, it, 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 yes, they could have made it exactly the same pencil thin as the, as you know, <laughs> like, like uh, um, Frozen, you know, the, there's a perfect example. Like that's, uh, a, 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 where was it? Where what was it? Th- what, what am I trying to say here? Well, those Norwegian bitches don't gain weight ever so <laughs> there's that oh my but like yeah. they're robots you know, there's... people there's there's technology inside of them they're gonna yeah. they're gonna change the perspective you know so i don't know i mm-hmm. i saw it and it looked great to me and it looked like i thought it looked the... like tiana i yeah it yeah. looks like it literally my thing is i don't understand why we're judging one animatronic that's in a warehouse that has certain lighting in it that's not in where it's supposed to be yeah one animatronic when we know there's going to be several different versions of this animatronic, everyone suddenly yeah. knows from a, an angle that the guests yeah. will never see that close, yeah. like, an angle exactly. in height that you're going to be lower than. Like, there's Which a lot going might on. Might be one of the reasons it's a little larger too. Is expressions yeah. from a distance that comes into play as well. But yeah, you know. I'm just so glad it's not one of those rear projection face monstrosities. Yeah, like, I wasn't concerned about that. Yeah, well, I don't know, but once Japan opened, or Japan, who opened the the newest Frozen? But it's Japan, right? I can't remember. Hong Kong, I think. Hong Kong. It's another, it's the same ride. But with the updated ones, once I saw those, I thought, they're not going to go back. They're not going to go do do Yeah, they're definitely just going with that moving forward. And thank God, because one time I went to Frozen and the faces weren't there. It was just a window screen. It was a window stair screen. Yeah, it's only worked it's on bad. the Seven Dwarfs. I I think that I think it actually works on, is pretty appropriate. I think yeah. it works on Seven Dwarfs. I actually think it works on Mickey and Minnie's too, just because those sure. characters are so weirdly stylized. Anyway, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I would. I, I could agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, but we also got a we got an opening date, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. summer twenty twenty four. So that's I guess a that's... lot sooner than I thought. To be yeah, honest. I... Well, I was confused because last I saw was fall, and then they changed it to this 2024, and then they did that. So, I mean, I was fully so prepared August. for. I mean, I feel like that can be any time between Memorial Day and like September. All right, Victoria. I know you were saying because you're going to be in Japan. Uh, you were concerned I, that you might miss it at the opening. I I know, but. Okay. And and well, I might I might be joining you in Japan. We'll see what happens. But mm-hmm. we'll see if there's some extra rats in Japan. But mm-hmm. what I will say is that's like early July, and I don't I cannot foresee this thing opening like in the crush of July crowds. That's what I was thinking too. Um, I was thinking like yeah. maybe like maybe Memorial Day weekend, yeah. like somewhere near there. Yeah, but we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. It would be crazy if Disney opened 
the new attraction at Magic Kingdom and the new land at Tokyo Disney Sea within a mm. week of each other. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. That opening in June sixth, about a month. Yeah, a month after I go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going exactly a month after. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's move over to Hollywood Studios uh, with a thing that I find confounding. Uh, Janine, <laughs> what do we have? Yeah, uh, we have a new snack stand opening up that is rather inexplicable in nomenclature. It is called Ice Cold Hydraulics, <laughs> and it has the tagline Thirst Suspension <laughs> since 1989. And I feel like they came up with that tagline and then. We're like, this is too good to not do. We have yeah. to name it hydraulic. Victoria's dog know. is like, it's bullshit. I hate it. <laughs> blue Guard loves everything. Come on, Blue. Um, so, can somebody yeah, tell Dave, me where you... this is? It's um in Muppet Vision Courtyard or Grand Avenue. Yeah. Okay, so they're saying that's Los Angeles themed now. It's Grand I mean, Ave- Grand, Grand, Grand Avenue, Avenue is technically yeah. is yeah. I oh, guess it is. this is that street that leads yard. into Gar- Galaxy's Edge, right? That the yeah. right the brewery so on the places left, on the on the corner. Yeah, this mm-hmm. this is uh, if I'm getting it right in my head, and it's kind of hard to see in the photos, but it's pretty close to the bathrooms there. The yeah, Royal it's, Flush. it's right. It's right. Like be it's in front of the bathroom. Yeah, which but is like, a little. It's, it's kind of weird. You have Grand Avenue has sort of mushed into Muppets Courtyard because that now the, the theater is called Grand Avenue Theater or something stupid. Um, but you have Pizza Rizzo and you and you have Muppet Vision and then you get and, and, and Rizzo like the bathrooms are themed after Riz, or themed after Gonzo. Um, but this is not themed to any of that. This is themed towards like the more normal Grand Avenue line of things yeah and it says weird. it's like modern day los angeles and it's like are you are they trying to bite fast and furious's rhymes here is that that what's happening <laughs> like, i, I want to make a point here that w- disney used to be pun king like california adventure used to be mm, like your dad's best pun here it is this is not a good pun this is nothing this is this is the word hydra added onto a thing that i looked up like hydra that store. just occurred to me i didn't get the hydra yeah, that's what it is. Heart. Like hydration? Oh, hydration. Oh, I, that's all I can think of. Yeah. It's because, a terrible oh. pun, but I guess it technically Because works. it's supposed to be like a garage for for I mean, fixing the hydraulics of your car, yeah, but no, nobody ever... The really cute. The menu. Yeah, no one calls anything hydraulics. Like, there's no business that goes by that unless they're doing, like, machine parts. So it does... It's the yeah. strangest... I, I just... I will say one thing. The yeah. menu board, is, as boring it's as it so looks, cute. actually looks like an actual menu yeah. board from like a... It does. Like I a love that. Street food. Like, I, yeah, it's boring. I love but, that. I'll yeah, be honest, I'm not mad at this. No. Person. No, like, I'm just fine the that there's... A... just weird. Yeah. And I feel like there's such a, like a Muppet renaissance going on. Like, there's a girl in my... The term is muppet sans, just so we're clear. It's oh, muppet okay. Sans. That's good to know. muppet sans. Um, She's like 10... <laughs> And she had this Kermit the Frog tote bag. And I was like, oh, my God, I love your bag. Where'd she get it? Where'd you get it? She made it. And she's like, yeah, I've watched every single one episode of the original Muppet show. She's 10. Oh, wow. Like That's because it's on Disney+. Plus. It matters if it's on Disney+. Plus. Desmond is the same way. Like, the kids are about the Muppets. So, Mm -hmm. like, why would they cram something that's not Muppet-themed into the Muppet? Honey Beaker. It could have been, you know. I guess they're kind of like. Expand on Grand Avenue. Oh yeah, the, the the amazing IP of Grand Avenue. You know, like that's what everyone's clamoring for is Grand <laughs> Avenue Land. Like, yeah, they, you're right though. The puns have gone downhill. They need, bring back Kevin Lively to Disney. Hire him again. <laughs> yes, very much so. Very much so. <laughs> Kevin, Pun we love you. Lively. You're the best punster. It's true. Um, I will say this is a. There is something poetically sad about. Uh, Starring roles being officially closed I the same know. week this bullshit of a pun enters. Like you can just feel the difference. Ugh. 
Ah, uh, the punnage. But you're right about DCA, man. Award wieners. Award wieners. Smoogies. Yeah. This is the Come best. Come on. This, this is was the best. best. There were... You got to dad it up. This is not a dad joke. This is a <laughs> frat guy trying to like make a joke in front of a girl pun. It's not good. <laughs> um, let's talk about things that are good, though. Disneyland. <laughs> Oh, Victoria. Also the menu. Oh, oh, you let me, go ahead. Talk about the menu. I didn't. I have yeah, not really. Yeah. The menu that actually far. looks really good. Like there's. Yeah, the things, menu looks good. And they're like all the all the food items are like kind of Coke themed. Mm-hmm. Which would um, make sense. So there's mini it. cinnamon rolls with a Coca Cola infused glaze and toasted nuts, and then there's these uh, savory churros topped with Coca-Cola and bourbon candy, bacon, sriracha, aioli, and scallions. Those, good. I don't do oh. bacon. I heard that one. Oh. Yeah. You have my so attention good. now. Yeah, so I want to try that. I want them to hold the bacon and let me try that. Um, so that's worth noting. Like The name is really weird, but the, the menu is pretty interesting. So that part's mm-hmm. It seems like they're kind anyway. like, you know, on Disney level with the menu, which I like. Yeah. The best comment yeah. I saw on Twitter was somebody said, take that, Epic Universe. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, no. I mean, where else can you get a Yingling for nine fifty, right? Like uh, a Thai PSP, though. Yeah. <laughs> like a theme park. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, let's go to Disneyland. Disneyland's got some good news. Um, Victoria, um, we got some unionization going on. So yes, um, the actor, the actors' equity officials are trying to get the. Well, it looks like they've been working on this for about two years now, but they're getting some of the performers at Disneyland to unionize in a union called Magic United, and they're working to basically get Disneyland to recognize them um, without, I believe, without the need to do a confidential vote, or they do need one. I gotta check that. But it's going to take a little bit more time to get that in check. They just want them to basically be able to just do things like have appropriate costumes, costuming, or deal with safety issues regarding that. Uh, apparently, there's health and safety concerns as well. There's other things I am not going to get into because there's investigations going on, but... Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like this is a great step in the right direction. I've heard some rumblings that Disney World performers are seeking to possibly do this as well, but I'm not sure what the case is. That. Well, we hope for it, of course. That's that's uh, that's, that's number one thing I think is important. Uh, I think that I mean, I would love a world where you don't need a union because you can. Uh, assume your corporation has your best interests, but <laughs> corporations have never had your best interests since the beginning of corporations. So, um, you know, I feel like it's, this is a long time coming. Uh, I agree. And, and this is a way to keep some of these performers safe as well from cuts, I think. It's, yeah. Um, and that's a big deal yeah. too. Well, and, and I mean that I'm all for it, but you know, that the, the last time that this had a go around was with the puppeteers Mm-hmm. At DCA, you remember that back in 2017 yeah. or so, they closed yeah. the Disney Junior Live on stage, which had run for like 14 years, and it was right. alleged that it was union busting because the puppeteers were um, trying to unionize, and the, the Disney was like, "Great, no more puppet, no more puppet shows." If you, and if you notice, there's not really anything Mm-mm. in the park that's puppet based anymore. Yeah, the live Disney Live Disney Junior Live on stage became fuzzy heads and big costumes. But that's a big difference from yeah, uh, like. I, there's a lot of puppeteers, but you know, compared to this amount of people, so right. yeah, this is hard by the numbers. Yeah. You think the puppeteers would have been able to unionize? No, because they got two hands. That's three people per person <laughs> that could be represented. That's quite the amount. Oh, anyway, um, <laughs> hire me to make hire me to make puns, Disney. I got you. Um, so anyway, uh, speaking of. Uh, I don't know, things getting um, pushed out. I don't know what the best way to put it. Um, we have an interesting kind of scenario here going on. This is, this is under Disneyland, but I think it kind of represented both parks uh, in many ways. Victoria, who, who might uh, have been uh, kind of told nah when it came to some of their artwork for Disney recently? 
Let's see here. So I'm going to pull up the artist's name. So artist Josh, a- Josh Agle, or otherwise known as Shag. Shag. Um, Everyone knows Shag, he, yeah. Yeah. But it, he revealed to the public that Disney canceled a mug that he designed based on the Enchanted Tiki Room, and this was due to concerns of cultural appropriation. Um, they've been really on top of this for the most part. I can't say fully, mm-hmm. but for the most part, they've been on top of that, especially with like the Tiki mugs and stuff. But uh, pretty much, I believe they stated that it's based on um, two go- two Tiki gods within the attraction itself, and they were a little bit hesitant to basically work on those because they feared of cultural appropriation and um, offense to the people that this attraction would represent. So, yeah, that's really, pretty much the. It, it- The thing that's weird to me is, look, look, I'm all for calling this out when it's an issue, and Tiki has always been somewhat problematic, let's be honest, right? Yeah. But but these two characters are in the show. They're literally direct lifts of the Tiki masks on the the corner pieces in the Tiki Room show. So if they're not changing the show, why are they placing the merch? Yeah. Because, I I mean, realistically, the show itself is a little questionable. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, it's like racial stereotype part. after racial stereotype. Yeah, yeah. And- I yeah. like yeah. my birds to be Irish, <laughs> German, German, Mexican, and French. That's that's you know that's in that order. Yeah. yeah, I mean Tiki Tiki's got. I'm not. I'm by no means a Tiki expert, right? There's a lot of people out there who understand where it came from, and 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 there are ways. In, in modern culture that are celebrating it with while also acknowledging that it's an issue. Um, and that's where this falls. This, that's where this doesn't make sense to me. Like if you're going to, if this were just some other thing, some other mm-hmm. made up tiki face. Okay. But it's in the show. Uh, the other thing though, is when you do look at the tiki mugs and things they've been doing, they're always through the lens of a character or an IP now. Right, that's like yeah, yeah. there's the Ewok one and Ogas. There's you know, like an Ursula uh, one. There's an Ursula one, right? And so that sort of takes the, the 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 sting off of it because it's more of a stylistic interpretation of a of a non Polynesian character whatsoever. Um, so I don't know. I it, 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 is is it that they didn't want to pay Shag ultimately, or you know, mm. or that they wanted to prioritize mm. IP uh, Tiki stuff? You know, maybe it's that as part of it. Certainly. Decision. It's certainly been, I mean, we're not going to see shrunken heads anymore, you know, like no. I, I, and I think there is, they changed the drink name because of that. Mm-hmm. And oh, really? I, yeah. Shr- mm-hmm. Shrunken zombie head. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, I think that, mm, I think Disney just realizes that they they got to be careful here and they have yeah. enough tropical themed IP that they can kind of. I mean, they've sort of pushed the boundary a little bit in the sense that, like, they tried to make Pinocchio, the the whale from Pinocchio, into a a mug and be like, that counts. And I don't know if it was that good of a sell because, like, it's not really a tiki property. Um, But they made it. They made the Nautilus into a giant tiki mug. And it rules. It's and and it's it's great. Yeah, (laughs) I have one. Yeah, Uh, but that's closer themed. I think. Yeah, I mean, they. I don't think they should shit the bed with shag. That's a, uh, both something you shouldn't do. And also a good rhyme. If you're prepping your voice for broadcasting, shit, shit the bed with shag, shit the bed with shag, shit the bed with shag, shit the bed with shag. Wait, that's a hard one. It's tough. Red leather, Um, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Yeah. But I, you know, if, if they did this appropriately and he does say like, he's not mad really at them for not releasing it. That's their prerogative, but he's upset that he can't showcase any of the work. I suppose it was his thing. Like they weren't going to give him any release material. And my vibe is you got paid, sir. Like that you got paid. It's technically their character, right? Yeah. Their character, their product. So, and your shag, what are you worried about? Like, come down. So I don't know. It's one of those weird things in Palm Springs. You do just fine. Yeah, you're perfectly all right. You're Shag. You've been making the same. Des- I mean, he's done what? Like he's done art for Star Wars. For I've seen at um, yeah. Festival of the Arts. I've seen, you know he's done tons and tons. Of I have stuff one like of the that, Shag so. Haunted Mansion shirts. Right, it, it, yeah. his style applied yeah. to anything. It doesn't have to be Tiki. Yeah, my first thing I ever had from his was a uh, the DVD collection of the Pink Panther films. 
Um, <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Which might have been the best part about that collection, because those movies aren't very good. Um, <laughs> they're good Talk about problematic. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, speaking of something that's not problematic, uh, and maybe we'll all take a dive into a pool of plush uh, as we celebrate. <laughs> Victoria, what is uh, currently happening at the Disney Company when it comes to a certain section of their brand? All right, so back by popular demand, we have Disney Store. Ta-da! So, um, Disney Store became Shop Disney. Yeah, to be clear, like, not physical locations, just yeah, the not online. Physical locations. Yeah, Yeah, so the online store is going back to Disney Store. So Shop Disney, which I, know, I think it came around like 2016, 2017, whenever they decided to close a shit ton of them mm-hmm. and then like put them in Target and then... I have never seen one in Target. But I have. It's not good. It's, it's, I believe it. It's an end cap. I believe, mm-hmm. I believe that. Yeah. So um, basically, I'm not sure exactly why, but they decided to rebrand, rebrand back to Disney Store. So everything with that used to be Shop Disney will now be Disney Store, and they're going to have a new logo. It's going to have a new look across the social media platforms for now Disney Store and um, uh, their website as well. Um, I think the packaging is going to slowly change over time, but this won't affect like purchases or anything like that. But otherwise I'm, I don't know why. It, it feels like someone's job was saved because they were able to say they did something this year. And that was changed. The name. I was just going to say, this is like, this happens at my, I work in corporate America now and like, just constantly things are rearranging for no reason. Like operational yeah. announcement, so-and-so is now over this department and this program is yeah. now called this. And like your goals are now called this. And it's just like, there's just someone on the payroll well, it's just, whose job it's just it is weird to, to be me. like, we've got I mean, to change the fact something. That- the yeah. fact that the, the, the shop Disney appeared, I mean, it only started in what, 2017 or something, right? Mm. Yeah, like, shop it, Disney started in 2017. It's weird to me that because the Disney stores, a lot of them were still open then. They really didn't start closing until, what, 2021 or so. Yeah. It was pandemic. Like, it was weird to me that they didn't leverage the Disney store brand and affinity for it and the nostalgia for it yeah. in the online presence. It's just weird. And maybe that's what this is. Somebody yeah. going, look, we close to the stores. We're, there's a whole generation who knows that name. I will give them credit for the photo they released with this was someone laying on a pile of plush. So uh, someone um, is- also shout out to Natalie. I know the girl there. Was- oh yeah, cool. Was I mean, that a that's... thing? Like, did you all want to just jump? I was, I was in my twenties when those stores opened. So did you all just want to like dive into to. that pile? But oh, to yeah. be it's like, to be clear, it's terrible like idea. Oh yeah, it's a bad idea. I my one of my good friends from Florida, Henry. He and his wife, uh, I believe, met while working together at the Disney store. Um, and he's like, they're, they're, they're just wooden shelves. Like you're, if you th- f- like fly into it, you're just going to hit corner after corner after corner. <laughs> um, it's not a good idea. Uh, but uh, I will say it's still very appealing. I just wanted to sit in there and watch movies on the big screen when I was a kid on there. Cause yeah. It was like, it was like a movie screen in this it store. Was it was vibe. wild. Yeah. It was a little interactive thing next to the screen. And yeah. All sorts of stuff. It was great. Um, and they used to have, you know, things that would move and cool window displays. Yeah, if they if they are smart, they're going to bring back the uh, black and, and white checker look for this. All that, the, all that Disney Store aesthetic, just throw it on the website. Because sell I mean, shit with that aesthetic. Because people will buy it. 90s is back people in. People will buy it. Oh, and big time. Yeah, it's so easy. Disney. Sell the sweaters that they used to wear. Those yeah. little the, those those cardigans in the, the pastel colors with, oh, the, with that the was piping cool. on it. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the, I've noticed they did a lot they're doing a lot of retro stuff with the merch lately. I'm really digging it. Like I love that it's making a comeback. Well, yeah. you know, Nathan, there's a Disney store near us. Like not near us, but like Probably one, of the, one of the last vestiges. Yeah. Some there's Yeah, that's the closest we're gonna get. Yeah, yeah. I I remember my the one when I was in 
what was it? it was Brandon, Florida had one for a while, and and then it closed when I was there. And my soul, my soul went with it. I'm, the the I'm one, the, the, well, the one that used to be in the mall right near my house, um, is now like some board game store or whatever. And when you go in, there's like it's there's archaeology still there of the Disney store. Like some of the there's yeah. a bunch of the bunch of the tiles are still there. Some of the molding in the in the displays. It's just really sad. You walk yeah. in, like, oh, I remember that. You kind of want to. You kind of want to take a chisel to it and like just take it with you. You know, it's just like give me some of this teal this lining. This belongs in a museum. Yeah, we'll Indiana Jones it up. Absolutely. You know, let's take back with ours. Give it to yeah. people. Speaking of the movies. Uh, Dave, we have some, some announcement. Uh, are we going to get excited about Marvel again? I don't know, but maybe... I don't know. This, this one might bring me back. In. So yeah, back. they, and they announced, not only announced the cast for the Fantastic Four, but they posted an incredible graphic and logo that is very, like even the Marvel logo is kind of mid mod. It looks like the Cinerama mm-hmm. logo. Yeah. It, it um, rules. It's the coolest. It, it Marvel rules. Logo. It's so good. And, and so I, I mean, is this a period piece? We don't know. We know nothing about the story mm-hmm. or, or the setting of this. Oh no, no! Cast... I, have, I I researched. Oh what yeah. Do you know? What do you know? I'm definitely going to be nineteen sixties for sure. It's going to be around the. T- the streets are saying JFK period. Mm, that would be the. They're 60s. also saying they're also saying Doctor Doom will not be the villain. Smart. Okay. So, no, you got to hold off. Galact- <laughs> it's going to be Galactus. Off. We already okay. did Galactus though. That was the apparently the, Galactus and Silver Surfer. That's what the streets are saying. Uh, the streets might be wrong. Uh, mm. We'll see. Mm. But I'm more not importantly, bad at it. more importantly, they announced the cast, which is uniformly pretty freaking great. Yeah. Love so it. yeah, so Pedro Pascal is of course uh, starring as Reed Richards, which I think is inspired and cool. I think um, that's good. Uh, uh, Vanessa Kirby. Um, pretty much perfect from I, uh, Mission Impossible and Hobbs and Shaw and stuff. She's great. She's great. I so, want yeah, I love her as Sue Storm, and then Joseph Quinn, Eddie from Stranger Things, smart as move. Johnny Storm, which smart is very move. smart. Like he's great. I love yeah. him. Yeah, and he's going to bring in the goth ladies. All the goth ladies love him now. <laughs> goth ladies love Eddie, man. They and, do and, love and, him. And he, He's also really good at being arch and funny, which is perfectly Johnny Storm, right? Yeah. And then uh, even Moss Bach- uh, Bachrock. Is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah. yeah uh, the older brother in the, in the bear. Cousin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or cousin, excuse me, in the bear. He's great. And uh, I'm just very glad they actually cast a uh, a Jewish actor as the thing. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's who he is. That's the character. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. who he is. Ben Grimm. So yeah. I'm very excited. It debuts uh, next summer in July, July 25th, 2025. The poster really made me squee, actually. Yeah. Like, it's really, it's not what I expected after the Fantastic Four versions that we've seen thus right. far. Yeah. Not what I expected. I think that if we're, and I don't know what they'll do. I really don't. But if they're smart and they finally went, Oh, you know, we really got to put this in the MCU. We really got to put this in the MCU. And they finally went, mm, no, we'll just, mm, no. Yeah. Nah. That would be the best thing they could possibly do because nobody wants the homework anymore. And if they yeah. can just do their own thing and it doesn't matter with everything else. And it's, it's own, like all these studios are freaking out right now because not that Madam Web was going to be this big blockbuster thing, but like none of these things are making money the way they used to. And so they need to do something that's branching out and being different and, and being very clear that you don't have to watch 20 movies to enjoy it. So if they're smart, they're going to really, oh. you know, I'm so tired. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be very, glo- <laughs> very hopefully it'll be very gloves off. Cause you know, yeah. I've already seen. Yeah, I've already seen one terrible superhero movie with Pedro Pascal in it, where he's the best thing in it. I don't need two, because he was the best thing in Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah. By a oh my god, that long shot. existed. Yeah. Oh yeah. I it, that. Oh no, it's 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 bad. Yeah, it's, I, I didn't have an it. Movie. It is yeah. bad. Uh, the, the, it the is moral here's question. What, the the, the, the moral. Uh, uh, questionability of her um you know taking over someone's life to turn him into steve and fuck him is uh reprehensible because that's I what mean, she does it is she it does is, 
It is Wonder Woman rapes a guy in a movie. It's literally she true. Does. It happens. It happens in the movie. <laughs> I'm it's not, not ki- a joke. Like, I'm not just throwing the word out. It's, it's not a joke. What she happens. rapes a guy. Yeah. 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 She uses Daniel her magic powers, set. turn him into Steve, and then spends the rest of the movie raping him. And then yeah. afterwards puts him back in his old life like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, wait, Whoops. you can make things out of clay like your dad. Like, she can literally create yeah. animals and things with her powers. And you have to. Oh, it's awful. It's so bad. The only yeah. only re- redeeming thing is the fashion and some of the music. But man, yeah. that and movie. Pe- Pedro. Is- Pedro's oh. very good. I, He's I, great. I, the thing about that I, movie is I, it is a it is a Twilight Zone episode starring Pedro Pascal with Wonder Woman in it. It's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very weird. Did you ever see the original um, Fantastic Four that never got released from the 80s oh, that you can yeah. find nowadays the, online? The, the Roger Corman one. The Roger Corman mm-hmm. one. Oh, dear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's it's hilarious. It's classically terrible. spoofed in Arrested Development season yes. four. Yes, the best part about that season. Um, don't, don't finish that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stay away from Wonder Woman. <laughs> like literally, don't stay away from her. Bad. <laughs> this is bad. Um, uh, okay, let's move on to Broadway. We're going to the Broadway. Uh, Broadway, Broadway. Welcome, Broadway. No don't you just I love theater, theater people? Theater. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, Disney Theatricals uh, is developing something, and this makes me excited because it's actually one of my favorite modern era Disney films, and yeah. that is Tangled. Um, and don't get too excited because they have developed stuff in the past oh, yeah. that never make it to Hercules. Broadway. Yeah. Very right. Sure. That, that, that yeah. they uh, previously, like, they develop almost everything and they turn them into professional licensing and school productions and cruise, cruise, sh- cruise ships yeah. and things. And there is a cruise ship version that you can watch online that they, uh, in 2020, they, they, they posted a full version of it online from the Disney cruise called Tangled the Musical, um, which had three new songs from Alan Menken and Glenn Slater, who did the original film. And that, that's, um, uh, I See the Light is one of my favorite romantic mm-hmm. songs from any Disney movie. I love it so much. Um, her I Want song at the beginning. Um, and I think Mother Gotha is like the, worst disney villain like the most evil the scariest yeah. right yeah there's yeah. so much going in this movie that works really well and i i think it would make a really fun musical it, it it reminds me of the same vibe in terms of like romance and setting and fun and 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 stakes as mm-hmm. beauty and the beast like i think it's to mm. me it's com- comparable as a movie i i it's one of my favorites and i think as a broadway stage musical would be amazing i'm not so sure they if are it's developing got, it. does it have the legs i mean I, the thing is is frozen it has was the such hair a, uh, <laughs> frozen was <laughs> frozen was such a big massive thing that you could have made that broadway show into dog shit and people would have seen it for two three years I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of Tangled fans, for me being one of them. But I don't know if this can last at a, a larger scale. I certainly mm. think it. I mean, I would like to think that it could. Um, but, you know, I've been not wrong. But, like, Lion King isn't exactly the first thing you think of for Broadway. And then it becomes <laughs> and it were. The, the absolute pinnacle of Broadway Disney. Broadway, the absolute pinnacle. Broadway. So, Broadway. Um <laughs> So, yeah. Um, speaking of things that Disney isn't doing anymore, uh, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next yeah. piece of news. Yeah, so, in 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 yet another um, uh, uh, a piece of disappointing news about physical media, um, Disney is kind of abandoning, but not really, their DVD and Blu-ray disc business. They are not doing it themselves anymore. They have struck a deal with Sony Pictures Entertainment to outsource the manufacturing, distribution, and marketing of Disney's DVDs and Blu-rays and other physical media. I mean, and that obviously goes with another news thing that hit this week that the um, Disney Movie Club is shutting down, right? Yeah. Which was their direct-to-consumer yeah. club, Disney Movie Club. Um, so, there, uh, I, I you mean... Is Sony the only studio still making that stuff? Uh, I mean, uh, I think there are. There's always been a lot of outsourcing for this. Sure. Um, yeah. And I think this is another way for them to give one to Sony, who has access to one of their major characters, uh, and sort of its mm. goodwill. Um, mm. I didn't no, think of that, but you're right. No reason to not. I don't. We don't want to do Can it anymore. You clarify that, huh? 
access to who? Spider Man. Uh, Sony Spider-Man. has okay, all the that's rights. What I thought. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And so, yeah. so it just makes sense that if you're going to outsource it and Sony's doing it and you want to continue a good relationship, why not give it to them? Um, hell, they might do better than Disney has because, like, Blu rays have come out with nothing. It's so funny when they're like, I can't understand why no one's buying any physical media. I don't know why Kermit's on the board. I don't know. I'm Kermit's <laughs> on the board. Um, I don't, you know, they're like, I don't know why anyone's not buying this stuff. And then you look at it and it's like the movie and there's no special features and there's nothing interesting on it. And you're like, well, I can stream the movie. I can't stream everything right. else. Um, it, it's confounding to me. I, I it, Disney, a, a smarter Disney would recognize that a boutique Disney collection via Criterion is like selling vinyl. And they turn, make I, I was just going to say, turn it into yeah. the vinyl business, guys. Like, it, yeah. you don't have to sell millions of copies. No, you don't. But they don't have any interest in things they can't sell millions of. They, yeah. they, they just true. don't give a shit. Um, well, and when they and look at when they do when Disney does do like vinyl, they do it through other people like Mondo, right? Yeah, like, I I yeah. have a beautiful yeah. Mondo release of Tron Legacy on vinyl. Then they didn't do it. That's just a license deal. Yeah. So and, and of course it was, it's gorgeous because it's Mondo. It's and gorgeous so, like, and it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to give it to people that that really know what they're doing, they did that with Criterion. I mean, Wall-E is the first Disney movie in Criterion in ages. Technically, technically, uh, you know. Uh, let's see. Um, Armageddon was like in the first hundred of Criterion uh, releases, oh, wow. which is of course Disney. So like they've have a history. Yeah. yeah, people don't remember that Armageddon and The Rock are both in the Criterion collection, but it's true. Um, <laughs> I don't know why Armageddon. Got about that. The Rock, I get. It's a good movie, but um, yeah, the uh, if they're smart, they would just work with Criterion and people like that and. And make some really, really rad. You know, do you remember the like steel book, like Disney presents stuff they released that were like eighty dollars a pop? Those like yeah. DVD sets. They were like, here's all of here's it was the treasure collection, wasn't it? Like, here's all of Davy Crockett. Yeah, they were, like they like would that. use to, like the Disneyland one. That stuff was so cool. Um, I mean, it's too expensive for me. Well, but my they... library got them. Bless you. Sorry, my cat beef. No, that's fine. What are you saying, Victoria? Um, no, I was like, did they try that with the uh, 100th anniversary thing? Uh, I mean, it was one. Well, big, I mean, the- it was one big trapper keeper of stuff, right? True. That, True. Wasn't it like two thousand dollars or something? Yeah. Insane? something <laughs> yeah. like that. With no special features, probably it was just with like dumb no. Movie. Yeah. Not that I. It was literally just the movies I yeah. checked because I wanted to That's know what the wild. fuck I was getting for my money. That's so crazy. Um, I mean. Uh, maybe with their hands being off of it, we'll actually get some interesting releases. Uh, my guess is no, but <laughs> you know, Yarg, it's a pirate's life for me. Um, <laughs> so anyways, with that, that's the news. Uh, it's kind of a short news week this week, but that's okay. Cause we have plenty to talk about in beware our guests. Okay. So to begin with, uh, as you've noticed, Sara is not here. Sara has fallen ill. Not it's not because she was canceled. Um, <laughs> though she was canceled. Sure. She was canceled. Um, yep. But anyway, we have an update on uh, the story that got Sara so canceled, which is the guest with the uh, that had was swimming in the rivers of America, quote unquote. Yep. Um, so we find out that it is technically a mental disability, uh, but it is from tra- traumatic brain injury. It was a TBI. Um, uh, and so, so his equilibrium issues. Correct. Yeah. And so because of those equilibrium issues, um, he's usually when he's on the raft, he sits down on a crate and I guess supposedly someone didn't let him. Um, cause this was his, uh, he's, he spoke to, uh, Walt Disney World News today about this. So I'm glad they reached out for clarification. And basically, the the cast member said he couldn't sit down, uh, which I think normally they don't allow you to. I think that's always a... Yeah, normally they don't Normally they don't let you because I think that's he, where the uh, fire hydrant and stuff is. Yeah. I mean, fire but he said, fire he, said he, had in the, he said he had in the past, and he had a service dog with him too that alerted him to his pending It's kind of weird issue. that someone got hardcore yeah. about it. Um, 
It's iffy, yeah. Yeah, but he's right in the sense that he's now requesting Disney reconsider their safety uh, on the on the rafts and and, and add seating because it's wild. Yeah, and he said he's been asking for it for ten years. Like he's a repeat customer, so mm-hmm. that that adds some interesting cre- credence to the to the whole thing. The, yeah. You know, the most interesting thing I think in the story is what he was before his disability he was a u.s navy veteran yeah. and a retired swift water rescuer yeah that meaning wild? if anybody wild. was going to fall in here and survive it'd be him right yeah. like that makes sense because he was like i know that people have drowned in the river of america and disneyland in this year and this year yeah. and the yeah. waters will carry the current was really the current strong. is stronger than you think it is yeah, yeah. it is yeah yeah and so, so, he, it's, so it's just wild to me that it's that it happened to be that guy. You I mean, know? luckily, to be completely honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. And, yeah. and so basically what happened was, is he wasn't sitting down. He had uh, I don't know if he considers it a seizure. I'm trying to think of the best way. Let me see how he words it here. Um, he calls it basically he blacked out is the best way to put it. Um, and because he blacked out, he fell over the side and then he got he was going away from the boat because of that current. And then also because yeah. he thought for a while it would probably be safest to go to the Island. But then when he was told not to, he didn't go anywhere. You know, he like, he did his best to tread water until they got to him, which was good. Um, uh, and you know, it makes sense. If you look at the photos, there's a dog in the, in the photo of the raft and like, it's, it's all pretty legit in that sense. So yeah. um, it just seems like a happenstance of, uh, poor i don't know if i want to blame the cast member because they're told certain things and then it's not like they get like many places it's like well i'm told not to do something but that doesn't really represent humanity and now i need to figure it out and they'll get in trouble either way so uh it's just it's weird poor planning and it's weird that there isn't it is weird that there's not a bench or something on the yeah that's not fast I don't know if there's anyone necessarily to blame, but there can definitely be changes made to prevent this from happening again. Yeah, like get rid of the rafts. It's stupid. That part. (laughs) So stupid that there's like a whole part. There's just a whole piece of Disney that you can't get to after a certain time. And you have to take a small, nothing says like, you know, uh, you know, oh, we're Disney. We, We, you know, we understand that we've made you like, get passes for everything at specific times. But if you would like to risk going onto an Island that you can't get off of as quickly as possible uh, and, 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 you know, walk around on that, go right ahead. No, it doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense to me, Um, but they'll never listen to me about that. So anyway, um, you know, we're happy. He's safe. Uh, Sarah, he still has a TBI. So you're canceled. Um, (laughs) Doesn't sorry, mean you're man. not. Doesn't mean you're not canceled. I'm sorry, Sara. I looked into the rule book. Um, I'll talk to Joe Biden. We'll see what we can do. Um, so the next one up is uh, a gender reveal. Uh, it seems like a gender reveal. They don't say what it's for. I, I can't imagine it's not a gender reveal because uh, what it is is a bunch of pink smoke uh, at Disneyland Paris. These these guests just pull out a smoke bomb. And light it off, I'm guessing, for a photo. So my guess is it's a reveal. Is my, I mean, does that seem right to you guys? Yeah, that's about right. I've seen, I've seen that before. It's a, yeah, it's a bright pink, thick smoke bomb in, in a park. Like, who <laughs> thought this was, like, I, I'm, <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, it's also very appropriate that it happened at Disneyland Paris. <laughs> Why very is that? appropriate. Why is that? Just Why? Because, just because they're known for it. Having crazy gas do shit like, oh like, well, and, gender and, reveal and parties they, and they are do... one of the worst exports of the United States. You can't put this on. This yeah, no, I'm not putting yeah. it on Disneyland Paris. I'm just saying these antics tend to happen at Disneyland. Okay. Paris. I, I, I think it's. I think it's also they have a very, very uh, a strong culture of protesting. So he probably had these on hand. Oh, very. Yes, um, very he probably yeah. has oh, a drawer true. full of smoke bombs. Yeah. Um, just thought he for various Miz's protests ass. throughout the year. Yeah. Just go for it. I mean, we love a good revolution. And but I, but I'm with better. Janine. Like gender reveal parties, like just an apology to the world right now. Yeah. We're sorry oh, that really? that became a thing because they're awful. Yeah, they are awful. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Like, don't you just be happy you have a healthy child? Like, yeah. you don't even just, know if you have a healthy child. You don't even know that. You don't even know, you don't that, know that yet. <laughs> you, don't even know. That, that you could form. you could burn down a forest and then lose your child. Like, it's the worst. It's the worst of all worlds. So <laughs> don't do that. Do it. Like, do something fun. Like. Yeah, this like isn't even fun. This is showy. Something. That's the thing. This is it Instagrammy. Is. It's not even like we we got our family together and we're gonna cut a cake. Like this is that yeah. like I'm gonna put this up on TikTok bullshit. Um, yeah, not so good. Not so good. Get it together. I don't know if they were French. They could have been Americans. Probably were Americans. Um, Who knows? Yeah, say la vie. Uh, let's go to the next one, which is very American. Um, uh, two. <laughs> Two 56-year-old twin sisters got into an absolute brawl uh, at a uh, Disney resort. Uh, let's see here. At the, uh, I'm trying to think what the resort was. It was Art Wait, of Animation. Sorry, I, I already said it. it was Art of Animation. Uh, it's Stephanie Cassidy uh, from uh, Slidell, Louisiana. Uh, and okay. her twin... Uh, we're staying at the Art of Animation, and they both have separate sides of a story here. So Stephanie says that around 10.30 p.m., uh, she left the TV on in their room, and her sister was trying to go to bed, and her sister got up and yanked the power cord out of the wall, which I don't know about you guys. Hotels don't usually let you get to the power cord for the television. That's kind of, yeah, kind of impressive that she was able to do that. Yeah. Um, I once was in Vegas uh, and I was the, I was bored and tired of being in Vegas. Uh, so I was watching uh, Yentl on TCM. Uh, that's how I enjoy Vegas. Um, and <laughs> I couldn't turn Yentl off because the controller, the batteries died in the controller and I couldn't pull the TV out of the wall. Yeah. So I was stuck for like mm, a long time because uh, no one would show up just and I was watching TCM perfectly happy. But it was like one <laughs> thirty two in the morning by the time they got to me. Um, oh, yeah, it was rough. Uh, but hey, thanks, Ben Maquins. It was good times. Um, so, you know, it's hard to get to these TVs. So, so the sister uh, yanked the power cord out. Uh, and then it says the sister who was unnamed in the report, which is funny that it was unnamed, uh, allegedly punched Cassidy. The blow knocked her to the ground and she hit her head on the TV cabinet. So I don't know why you would get up and, and do that. That seems insane. Uh, when the nine, oh when, when she called 911 and then when they got there, the left side of her jaw was swollen and she had scratches on her neck, chest and wrists. So, uh, and she refused to go to the hospital, which weird, weird call at this point. You called nine one one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so the opposite side of the story, according to her sister, uh, is that Cassidy dropped a metal water bottle on her toe, and then tried to blame her for the drop. Like she dropped it, and then was like, "It's your fault that I dropped it on your toe." Uh, and then Cassidy started yelling and cursing. So the sister put on a white noise machine, which pissed off Cassidy. And then she got punched. Uh, something of that nature. Um, but I think it was like, she turned the volume of the TV up to try to compete with the white noise. Yeah. And then there was, that's what it's like. like the bed was moved when the, she said that like someone got pushed onto the bed and was like strangling someone else. And then yeah. the cops show up and they're like, well, the bed was moved. So it's probably the second story. Yeah. Um, well, and wasn't she there, there's like there's some detail in the story about she had already pleaded not guilty to a misdemeanor battery charge earlier that month. Yeah. You know, like, how, oh, you know how it is. How do you celebrate a misdemeanor? Oh, I got, I'm going to Disney World we'll go on um, Christmas vacation together. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because this is like uh, December. Oh, wait a minute. This is the same charge. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, okay. Same charge. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's probably finally okay. went through because, oh, okay. as we know, a I lot mi- of it's a while to get to poorly it. written. Yeah. Yeah. A Wait, lot of so these she, uh, things. She called nine one one. Come in late. Didn't go to the hospital, but he was. There was charges. I, apparently, one of the sisters was charged with a battery. Yeah. By the other one. Cassidy, clearly. I think it said. Yeah, yeah, it would be the one that wasn't that was charged because that's that, oh, that's the ruin report. Your own vacation. It's uh, you. I'm sorry, but you're like 56 years old. Like, I'm so lost. How do people get this I'm way? Confused. 
How do what, what? How? So anyway, uh, I just have I just have the Rosemary the Clooney rise. songs. I have the Rosemary Clooney song "Sisters" going in my head right sisters, now on the act from White sisters, Christmas. Sisters, 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 never like a sister. Do you need to punch her? Yes, you do. Um, okay. <laughs> Pusher and the th- and the huh and the huh. Um, this okay. is some yeah. this is some white trash bullshit. Right yeah, why yeah. people? Louisiana. Those are some white people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, and, and art of animation. Come on, that we keep that for like movies. Keep it out of art of animation. I was gonna guess movies too. I that know. was my thing. Wow. <laughs> That's because. Like, re- that's because you know we everyone knows that uh, Disney Guest Fight Club happens in front of the large Roger Rabbit uh, in movies, so you're allowed to. That's how it works. Um, is that movies that has a large Roger Rabbit? No, that's Pop Century. That's Pop Century. Okay. Yeah, uh, I fucked up. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> here's a story of a, uh, a Massachusetts police detective who's been arrested at Epcot for hitting a sheriff's deputy after trying to get into a, a private event uh, and also threatening security. So if you know anything about Ro- uh, Rosencrown, uh, the, the, I, not Irish, the, the UK pavilion uh, place, there's a lot of private events that happen in those areas, weddings, things of that nature. And apparently uh, this guy named Dwayne Arthur Danforth, uh, Detective Dwayne Arthur Danforth. Another thing you can say if you're trying to get your enunciations well. Detective Dane Arthur Danforth. Dwayne Forth. Um, <laughs> he uh, was off duty at Walt Disney World and drunk off his ass. Uh, and what a shock! He wanted with to, a child in his arms. with a child oh, in his yes, arms. That's right. With a child. And he wanted to get into this private event, and they told him he had to go around. And in response, with a child. A child in his arms. He threatened to kill a cast member and then pushed past him. Uh, And then, of course, security called in the sheriff's deputies as they searched for him in the crowd at the private event. Can you imagine having a wedding at Epcot and and this guy just walks in? Um, uh, He ignored the security guards. Uh, He uh, was finally, he resisted arrest, but then finally was arrested. I want to point out that in 2021, Danforth was named Officer (laughs) of the Year of the Brookline (laughs) Police Department. Um, Of course he was. Yeah. It's still a It's still a Yeah. I mean, I like. Oh, man. I. I, uh, Privilege. It's, it's it's that cop privilege thing, and yeah. and let me guess, he's probably white. Let's let's not be well. Let, bush let's here. Uh, let's see here. His name is it, well. First of all, he's from Brookline, Massachusetts. Uh, okay. uh, second of all, his name okay. is Dwayne Arthur Danforth. Put a the third on the end of that, and he's basically in Gilligan's <laughs> Island. Um, he was also drunk, wasn't he? He was, he yeah, was super drunk, intoxicated. Yeah, of course he is. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Massachusetts isn't known for its diversity. Shortly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so, you know, you know the wonderful <laughs> racial cornucopia known as a Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, oh, he's yeah, he's a oof. Oh, well, now I want to look up. I just his looked photo. him up too. Yeah, yeah. now I want to look him up. Y'all, look, gotta look up this Dwayne Arthur up. for us. He's busted up. He is. Um, yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! He I'm got busted. He is an angry. He is an angry. Child he, endangerment charges. Yeah. He's an angry, angry he fellow. He got. He got felonies, man. Battery, assault, and battery on law enforcement, and resisting an officer without violence. That's surprising that he got the without violence. That's because he's a okay. cop. But, uh, that's because he's a cop. That that Leo, I think, is like that's. I think that's a second degree felony in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Oh yeah. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Congratulations. Fuck around and find out segment of our podcast. Congratulations, people. Dwayne. See, what signaled he was white to me is that his name has a U in it and not a W. It's yeah, it's not the <laughs> traditional black sound. It's not Dwayne. It's Dwayne. It's not the traditional black yeah. sound. So that, yeah. that, hit, that was a hit for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I it's classic classic cop move um three-year minimum mandatory Oof. well there you go 
you know what? Let's go to something more fun, shall we? Uh, and that is Cobb's Splendiferous. Splendiferous? Pl- Splendiferous? Cobb's Splendiferous <laughs> Show and Tell. Okay, so Dave, you've got a little video for us, do you not? I do, I do. So um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were doing another one of these segments, and I was showing off fun stuff from that I'd found in my closet for Men in Black, um, one of which was this Blue Peter badge, mm-hmm. which um, Nathan and I explained to the, the, the newbies that didn't know. That the la- Blue the, Peter is the a, non-Anglophiles. <laughs> the non-Anglophiles. <laughs> Blue Peter is the longest running kids show in TV history. It's been on it since 1958. And, um, uh, and it's like a magazine style show, chat show for kids where they meet cool people and go around the world and see cool stuff. And when they give you a Blue Peter badge, when you're on the show, they give you a Blue Peter badge. And I didn't really think anything of it until I actually like put it on my backpack and had it on when I was on a trip to the UK and I was treated like a fucking rock star. Like, it is a big deal to have one of these things. And I got like discounts and it, 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 was, wow. it, was, it was amazing. I didn't know. I'm, I'm just a stupid American, but evidently it's a big, big deal. So mm-hmm. I actually, through our contacts, so I, I was on the show because they were covering Men in Black. They actually had the, um, the world premiere uh, access to, to, a, uh, to a broadcast piece about the ride. Mm. It was just about to open. So they got the exclusive. And so, um, because it's a kid show, they usually do them in a fun way. And they said, can we have whoever's going to take us to the ride? Can we have them dress up in a, in a black suit? And I was like, fuck yeah, you can. <laughs> of course, I'm going to show up as, as an agent. And so, um, they filmed the segment. And then a few months later, before I left Universal, I got a tape in the mail. And it was a, a VHS tape from the BBC. And it was my episode. And I watched it once. It was PAL. So, I had to watch it on a player at work because we had ones that convert but I've had that tape forever and I didn't have a pal player. And then the tape broke during a move. And so I had in 24 years, I've never seen it again. I am this, ha- this tape staring at me. And we talked about all this on the show and the BBC has a thing called the G- BBC genome, which is like their archives. And you can actually uh, request them to find an episode because I don't know if you knew this, but the BBC had a huge, what was a fire in the seventies or the sixties, Nathan, where they lost like, whole seasons of doctor who or well something. the doctor who oh, wow. the doctor who seasons were because they used to save tape tape was expensive. right they used to save tape and record over so them. they would record but over they stuff because also- they didn't know and then of course there had yeah. been fires and things of that nature yeah mm-hmm. so now they are meticulous <laughs> about about archiving this stuff so i put a thing <laughs> into the bbc genome and lo and behold uh someone there reached out and they had a copy of it so um uh this is the first time i'd seen it in 24 years you're going to see baby dave Little baby, thirty-year-old oh. Dave, with a lot of hair, um, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, to point that uh, out. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like anything behind the scenes. It's just a little bit I do with the host of the show, and then <clears throat> and they ride it, and there's footage of them riding it, and then a little a little bumper at the end. So uh, why don't we uh, take a look at it? Why don't we? The world premiere, folks, on the internet. World premiere on the internet. All right. <laughs> Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're now going to do the audio portion because now I can cut this section out because we're going to put the video portion in. <coughs> so now I'm just going to say uh, a little thing for the audio listeners about what's going to happen here and where they can get it. So, Okay. Okay, Dave, you have something special for us this week, but they can only see it on YouTube uh, as part of our episode, correct? What do you have for them? Uh, this is a an episode of the BBC TV series uh, Blue Peter, which is the longest running uh, kids show in history. Been on the air since 1958. They covered the Men in Black attraction way back in 2000, uh, right before it opened. They had the world exclusive to talk about it on TV, and I was invited to put a black suit on and be an agent and take the hosts uh, onto the ride. And so I've been looking for this clip forever. I, I have an old VHS set tape of it that broke in a move, and I've never been able to watch it again. Um, uh, and uh, I, when I posted about this and, and talked about this in the last show, lo and behold, BBC Archives has this application process where you can look for footage and they found it and they reached somebody from the BBC archive reached out to me and said, here it is. And uh, so this is a world premiere uh, of this cup because they don't 
uh, post these shows online no. No. and, and, uh, uh, um, and it's just for personal use. Uh, uh, we don't make any money off this podcast. Ooh, just ooh. so, just so everyone knows. And it's a small, clip. um, not, not so and it's a small clip. It's yeah. just, just, a, just my segment of the show. Yeah. And it's the first time I've seen it in 24 years and, uh, go watch us on YouTube. If you're listening to the audio version, mm-hmm. because you get to see little baby Dave, fresh cheeked 30 year old baby Dave. <laughs> so check that um, out. You uh, can, uh, of course, Go to our website if you need to find our YouTube link at ratcastlepod.com. Uh, and it'll be right there. Look for, gotta look for gotta look for Dave. Good. Time for a briefing from Agent D. Agent D. Otherwise known as Dave Cobb. Well, well, well. You certainly look the part. But do you think you have what it takes to be the best of the best and protect the earth from the scum of the universe i reckon I think so, so yeah <laughs> so uh what can we expect in there you can expect a training mission where you board a specialized mib training vehicle they let you zap at aliens and neutralize them and there are over 127 different alien creatures inside your mission that's a lot of aliens that's a lot that. of them and they're it's all a, bad they're all buds absolutely <laughs> zap everything if it moves zap it. if it doesn't move zap anyway also they zap back at you so when you get zapped by the aliens, your vehicle spins out of control. So you've got to zap them before they zap you. And there are 36 possible combinations of endings when you finish your training mission. Wow. So never face. the same ride twice. <laughs> Absolutely, never face. the same ride twice. How would you think we're going to do then? I that think you're going to do pretty gel. well. Look pretty sharp. So uh, <laughs> let's go on in there and try. Yeah. Time to see what you're made of. Oh, oh without that ride, red button. Don't even dream of pushing you. Did you, did you so ride at all with them, Dave? Or men did they just go do the alien I did. Attack I did. No, I rode with them. life-size ride through video game. An impressive 200 computers would be used to control the vehicles, animatronics, lighting, computers. and video wow. effects. <laughs> notice that i said by the way i don't think we ever talked about this notice i said zappers and zapping yeah that's because we opened a year after columbine oh and yeah could not say the word shoot or gun yeah how did we do not bad so pretty good we made a very good. conscious There's choice one more thing i need you to do uh-huh. okay Look right here. <laughs> well done, Dave. That's so awesome that you got to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's a time capsule. So it's it, it, kids today are very used to like seeing video of themselves mm. from a very young age on. For somebody in my generation, like having <laughs> yeah. anything before maybe twenty years ago, yeah, is 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 kind yeah. of special so it's a it's definitely a time capsule uh, i was so young oh my god no idea what you're going to remember but i am curious they have you recorded in two different angles they have a wide and then they have a yeah. close-up did you do more than one take yeah. uh yes yeah that was it was a bit it sure. wasn't like a yeah. behind the scenes interview it was a bit yeah and uh agent d agent I'm d down. getting down with agent d <laughs> That's a uh, who doesn't want the D. I, I mean, mean, who doesn't want the D? You know, truly. <laughs> Your husband still says all, all the time, Agent D. Here he comes all the time. Yeah, he just here comes the D. Here comes the D. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. I didn't know there were thirty six different endings. I didn't I mean, either. Yeah, if you, and basically that is if you calculate what what huh, the math is basically <laughs> the math is basically there's high medium low scores Mm -hmm. left car right car so you can have high high medium medium low low right sure and and the and and then amongst that there are like i think i forget what the math is but there's like a number of alternate takes of what will says that fit into those categories so um, That's cool. You know, it was a marketing blurb, so they could say they had thirty six endings. It's it's just variations mm-hmm. on the theme. Yeah, but um, still, uh, but still, yeah, and one hundred and twenty seven characters. That was another one, and that includes like the flat guys in the windows with the blinds <laughs> that open. So it's you know, it's not necessarily one hundred twenty seven animatronics. Notice, I'm very carefully media yeah. training, very carefully yeah. saying <laughs> things like characters and 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 targets and zappers and yeah. zapping and not shooting and guns. There is um, a uh, there's long. Long, long memos about that. Yeah, there's a, f- a fun moment where, like, you're kind of doing the bit, 
and then I hear Dave Cobb come out, which is when you say they're bad, you go, they're bad. And that's what <laughs> I, I hear. I hear the Dave I know no longer doing a bit. They're bad. Like, it's just this very specific. <laughs> Um, but I love it. What's funny is the, what's funny to me hearing it again is that spiel that you hear me say, I had said a hundred times for other media outlets oh, and yeah. interviews and, and executives. I had been saying exactly that for like a year. It was just rote at that mm -hmm. point. You know, if it moves, shoot it. If, if it moves, zap it. If it doesn't move, zap it anyway. It was like the thing I always said to get a laugh in a presentation, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it's 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 it, it it's off the cuff, but it's not. Now I've been saying right. it for a year. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things that well done. works in the room, and Thanks. you keep it in, and, and you're like, "Why do I still say this?" After a while, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Um, I I'm trying to think. There was another question. Oh, where was it filmed? It, it, clearly, it was filmed in a back lot, but I just don't know where. Yeah. So yeah, they wanted something industrial. Sure. Um, they talked about the battery vent and tunnel building from the movie, right where they enter, and it's all sort of industrial looking, um, which was an original entry for the ride, by the way. And then we realized mm -hmm. that would look really ugly in a theme park. Yeah. So, and, and we're not in New York. If we had been in the New York area, maybe, but sure. You know, anyway, story for another day. Interesting. Um, so they were like, "Can we do something industrial?" And that is, um, I'm wondering if if any viewers would know. Do we turn this into a a contest rather than me telling you? Sure. Well, why not? I think we make a contest. Yeah, sure. Okay. If you know, it is right somewhere... yeah, but text me later. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. Later. It is somewhere on the on Universal Studios Florida property. It's not technically a guest area, but guests may have seen it. Okay. And that's the only clue I'll give you. Okay. Ooh. Wait, say that one more time because I want to make sure it's not in a in a traditional guest area. Okay. But guests have probably seen it. During certain seasonal events, Dave's over here being like, "Riddle me this, Batman." Ooh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I know. Oh, do you? Well, we'll, 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 we'll we will talk about this later. Yeah. Those yeah. of you that have interest <laughs> in this, do I know what we're going to give you? No. Do we? Maybe we'll just give you no. congrats uh, for being a smarty, yeah. and that's all you really want, anyways. Uh, so uh, get at us. Uh, you can find our email at ratcastlepod at dot com. So. Uh, get get to us. I think it's ratcastlepod at gmail dot com is the actual email, but you can find everything at ratcastlepod dot com. Um, yeah. So Dave, wonderful. I love it. It's it's super fun. And thank you so much for sharing. Thanks. Of course, of course. Um, we though need to go into our next segment because, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for rat corn. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye! Rat Court is now in session. The ratastic Judge Nathan Hartman presiding. Order, order in the court. Order in the court. Order in the court. I'll put a sound effect in here. Go ahead, Jimmy. Order in the Go court. Go ahead, Jimmy, do it. Uh, thank you, Bearliff <laughs> Cobb. Um, Janine, uh, court stenographer Janine, please. <laughs> Please, as court stenographers always do, read into the record because I can, I can, I can do a read back. Thank you. I need read you to the read into okay. the record our first case here in red court. <laughs> this is a fun one. Okay, so uh, George Santos, our beloved gay coded villain mm -hmm. of the <laughs> House of Representatives. Yes, we love, um, we love a we... villainous gay. We love a villainous gay. <laughs> we love we a do. villainous gay. Uh, is suing uh, Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> um, so basically, Jimmy Kimmel ran a segment where they bought a series of cameos mm. of uh, increasingly absurd things for George Santos say, and the segment was called Will Santos Say It? Mm. Um, so they paid him hundreds of dollars uh, in the first one, um, they used a pseudonym and asked him to congratulate a fake friend for winning the Clearwater Florida beef eating contest. <laughs> um, then they, <laughs> they got him to do uh, another one praising a, their fake mom for successfully concloning her beloved schnauzer Adolf. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. 
And then um, the next day they asked um, uh, Kimmel to praise his fake blind niece for passing her driving test (laughs) and then said that uh, she got in a really bad car accident. So if you could wish her a speedy recovery as well, that would be awesome. Um, And apparently he said all the things Um, which is very silly. Mm -hmm. And uh, Santos is suing them for $21,800 and change for commercial use of the videos. Mm. Um, They're actually asking for over $750,000 in damages and Uh, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. What's the damage? I'm lost. Yeah. No, it's like, <laughs> first of all, first of all, those prompts, those questions, those things for the, him to say, those are no more clever or misleading than a prank call. Than you know, I need to speak to Amanda Hug and Kiss. Right? Like, come on! Like, hundred you know, percent. Like, are you? Is he really video? that dumb that he didn't know that a? Ugh. No, he's. But he can decline those requests. No, but that, though, that's baby, the baby needs money. Yeah. Baby needs money. Baby needs money. Yeah. This f- smells like a, a cake and eat it too thing mm-hmm. where he's like, oh, I'll play the for sure. Fucking he's double game, dipping. And then I'm yeah. going to double dip and sue them. Yeah. 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 Which. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the rules of cameo are. I feel like an ABC lawyer would have went through this already. Like Kimmel well, isn't going to just. I've do done this. it once. And like they, the people can decline the request. So I'm, I'm just confused. Like you accepted it. Right. So. Well, I guess like he wouldn't know that it's being used for. Broadcast TV, Public broadcast, um, yeah. But but yeah. no one is no one is turning point. into Jimmy Kimmel. Didn't make an ad that said, "Tune in to hear what George Santos has to say." So no one is watching. Nope. Because of George Santos, so exactly. there is no. no additional it's not focus. like a defamatory thing no. or anything like that. No, it could be against He's cameo be, being hoisted on his own petard is what's happening. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's if he's defaming anybody. He's defaming himself by doing fucking cameos and being so, George okay. Santos um, yeah. is enough to and defame. being jo- right. Yeah. Let's start baseline. If anything, right. it's being by that. Is doing yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you want to be on Jimmy? He's he's he he's a fool in the sense that w- he thinks we're dumb enough to not realize that he's only suing Jimmy Kimmel to perpetuate us talking about him. So congrats, George Santos. We're we're talking I about mean, you. So George it's Santos. fantastic com. advertising for the existence of his cameos. So shut the, <laughs> shut the fuck mean, up, George. You know what he's going to he do. He's, you know how many celebrities have gotten punked? Right. Like, he is going to be smart about this. I can almost guarantee he's going to say, look, you don't have to pay me, ABC, but I get to be on Dancing with the Stars next season. <laughs> That's all he wants, right? He just I wants to further the – Entrench think, himself yeah. in, in – your average American. So where are we at with this? Are we legit or sus? Sus. 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 sus all day. I mean, I'm not familiar with the terms of cameo and all mm. sort like that's not an area of law that I have any. You any don't have cameo. You don't, you don't know cameo. Of, law? But I think it's yeah. sus. All right then. You know what? It's gonna be a no for me, dog. Okay. So, so on yeah. that one, it's sus. Okay. Clunk. Yeah. Our next one. All right. So then, Stenogra- moving on. Stenographer Janine. Stenographer Janine. Order in the court. Order in the court. Order in the court. Stenographer Janine. <laughs> Our next case. <laughs> okay. So uh, the name of this plaintiff gives the game away. <laughs> yeah. America First Legal <laughs> has filed mm. federal civil rights complaints against Disney for discrimination. Uh, basically they have obtained Disney's diversity initiative, which talks about their goals and structure for trying to increase representation and inclusion within the company. And they are alleging that Disney is intentionally discriminating against white American men, Christians and Jews mm-hmm. simply because of their race, sex, religion, and citizenship. Well, I would have to say, um, I would have to say that uh, if there's one thing I know about Hollywood is that Jews have been underrepresented for far too long. <laughs> white I'm people not. too, man. There's not enough white I'm men not. in movies. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and and in executive leadership. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I, as Martin so, Short once um, said, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm one part Jewish on my agent side. Hey yo. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, so um, they also complain about Disney's grant program for underrepresented directors. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, who is I, part of this? Who like, does this? Like, do you, did, you, did you see who's in charge of America First? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This It was really interesting mm-hmm. because this circulated in our group chat, divorced from, like, what – the actual complaint was mm-hmm. it was just like a suit is going to be filed alleging discrimination at Disney and it's like oh that could go a million directions yeah. but then I remembered Elon fucking Musk tweeted <laughs> this diversity initiative like two weeks ago complaining about how it's uh, discriminatory right. and uh, racist and yada 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 um, and so I was watching with bated breath mm. to find out what specific discrimination is being alleged here yeah. Um, and is it what Elon Musk complained well, about? I wouldn't be surprised only, if he's bankrolling not it. Not only on Elon Musk. I wouldn't be surprised if he's bankrolling America, America First uh, Legal is run by uh, known fascist Stephen Miller uh, of the non-hair oh. variety. <laughs> uh, and the of ha- That I didn't even know. The, uh, I didn't know that. I knew it was going to be terrible because yeah. the name is terrible. It's, yeah. it's the know-nothing... Yeah. Um, uh, the current generation. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was. Oh, Stephen Miller, president of America First Legal. Would you look yeah, at that? Yeah, so totally. Okay, uh, you know, this is not a Supreme Court justice robe. So I, I will say sus because uh, uh, I wouldn't say legit. I would say legit if I was uh, the majority. But knowing the current Fifth Circuit and the Supreme Court, this could technically have legs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I would not be surprised if an activist court looks at this and is like, "Nope, you cannot give mm. any weight whatsoever to yeah. minorities. You have to hire Samuel the white Alito man." Samuel Alito right now is like um, drooling. He's like, "Oh, give it to me, give it to me, Samuel Alito." Yeah. For Please. sure, uh, it's like Pavlov's yes. dog. I would not be surprised if they are in direct <clears throat> contact with fucking Alito, or at least his law clerks. Yeah. Man, fuck that guy. Wouldn't surprise. Uh, but no, this is rat court. And in rat court, yeah, I think we're gonna say oh, sus. It's sus. Sus, Dave. Sus, yeah. Victoria. Sus. I, I will do. It. Reverse racism does not exist. It's true. It's black history month. I refuse to comment. Yeah, order the court. We say sus. And with that, we are done with rat court. Uh. And thanks to the transitions of movie magic, I am now in a different outfit. Um, But our favorite segment of the week and every week is our good friend, the Astuter Computer Poem of the Week. That's why I'm a router for the computer. Everybody needs a friend. (laughs) Ah, hello, Astuter. It's good to see you. Always good. I wish he would. He's so camera shy these days, but uh, he's a sweet one. We, we appreciate you, Astuter. Uh, do you have any sort of um, something about the news maybe that you could uh, provide us? Uh, we would love to hear some sort of little haiku about this week's news. What do you have for us there, uh, Astuter? Any, any interesting things? Let's see. <laughs> Tiki gods silenced. Shag's mug deemed appropriation. Disney's cultural shift. Bars. Ooh. Bars. Uh, that one went hard. Uh, Bars indeed. A uh, student would like to say that he will be. Bars. Uh, a student will be performing in Greenwich Village uh, this coming June. Um, <laughs> it's, it's him and Allen Ginsberg. Um, so. Back from the dead, <laughs> one night only. <laughs> oh, Lord Almighty. I tell you what. Uh, and here's what I'll tell you as we finish up. Rat Castle is produced by yours truly, Nathan Hartman. I do it uh, because I love to talk to these people here, and I love that you get to hear how much I love talking to them. So uh, <laughs> that's – we love it. We love it. Um, please subscribe. Tell you, I'm starting to sound like Trump. I love it. Please subscribe. <laughs> tell your friends. <laughs> I tell you, I was there the other day. A rat came up to me on Buy the street. Some sneakers. 
Big Rat. Buy some sneakers. It was crying. Big Rat crying in my face. Big Rat said, Mr. Trump, I love Rat Castle so much. All right. So please subscribe. <laughs> tell your friends. Leave questions. Buy merch. We got the thing. Tell us where Dave, where our 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 best agent, Agent D. Where's that big big D as we call him around here? Where's Big D in that clip? They're gonna be pausing that video like the Zapruder film. Yeah. Love watching that thing. Yeah. <laughs> And I love it. Do that. Um, and uh, yeah, you can find all those social links at ratcastlepod.com. Uh, now, grab your belongings and exit to the left. Will you stop this foolishness? What foolishness would you like to see? Will you get out of here? Ah!